What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day because today we have to be able to drive the car by the end of the day. This freaking thing is kind of kicking my ass, I'm not gonna lie. We had a lot of hiccups yesterday along the way, but I think now everything should be fixed, or at least by the end of the, by the end of today, everything should be fixed. We have a new wideband sensor for our AEM wideband so we can get this guy installed. And then, yeah, we gotta adjust the fuel pressure get all that sorted out, and then we can go drive. First thing I'm trying to get dialed in right now is the fuel pressure. I cannot get it anything below 70 PSI, which with one fuel pump, it's easy to get down to like 44, 45 pounds where we need to be or where we want to be. But with two 340 LPH pumps running full time, it's over running the regulator at idle, which I don't think it's a big problem. I remember when we tuned my black Evo 8, we were at like 60 PSI on that car, but this one's a little bit more. I'm gonna hit up Chad real quick, see what he wants us to do. And while we're waiting for him to get back, we can kind of button everything else up. So we're gonna have to pull apart one car to make another car run. I misunderstood what Chag meant when we were talking about wiring up these fuel pumps earlier. They're both hardwired, which they're right now, but one pump needs to come on at around 10 PSI. That's what he's wanting. That's exactly how the 10 is set up. So I'm gonna pull off what's called a hob switch. It's just a pressure switch off the 10. And then I'm gonna put it on this car because I really wanna get this thing like up and going. And I'm gonna get something over, and I wanna get it going today. Like I want it done. We've been working on this car for so long. And then I'm gonna try to get a, another hob switch overnighted for the 10 so we can just put that thing back together real quick. Um, so yeah, that's the current plan and Kind of sucks, but life goes on. I feel like I do this all the time. Pull apart one car to get another car going. Not very fun, but it's what we need. So here's the hob switch off of the 10. It's a very, very simple setup. All we have is a boost line coming off of it. That is gonna tee in to some sort of boost line on the car. This orange wire here will connect to 12 volts. And then this red wire right here is gonna run back through the car. And she is going to connect right to one of the blue wires on our relay. And all this does is allows the car to run one pump idle and cruising around so you're not kind of like overpowering the system like we are right now and then as soon as you get into boost wherever you want to set this thing at this guy's set at 10 psi right now so at 10 psi the second fuel pump will come on hopefully that makes sense all right so we got the hob switch installed this is a temporary setup because i want this one to go back on the 10 but it's very very simple setup we have it teed in right here wiring going to our feasible link and then this orange wire is connected runs throughout the entire car comes all the way to the back where our fuel pump is. And one blue wire, which is a trigger wire, is connected to that orange wire off the hobs. Also, I did clean this up a little bit, got that guy back on as best as we could, put some loom over that, so that looks much better. As long as the seat fits, we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure our hob switch is gonna power the pump. And all you have to do to do that, turn on the ignition and blow about 10 PSI into this hose right here. And that should kick on our fuel pump. All right guys, last thing to do before we go ahead, fire it up and adjust the fuel pressure is our new AEM wideband sensor. This is not a, a original AEM. This is one that you'd find at like O'Reilly's or something and they seem to hold up really, really well. I think they're about 80, 80 to $90. I'll link one down below if you guys have the same problem as me burning these things up. So let's get this on the car, lower back down, fire it up, get that fuel pressure set and we should hopefully be able to go drive it. That's good to go. Oh, 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 don't die, don't die, don't die. Fuel pressure is pretty low. We're at 35 PSI, so let's crank that up. That's probably why it's dying. So yeah, we gotta turn this in on our regulator. We gotta turn that in to about 
40, I think we're gonna do 44 PSI. And you do this with the vacuum line unplugged. As soon as you get that 44 PSI, tighten that nut down, put that vacuum line on, and we're done. We should be completely dialed in with the car. I'm gonna go ahead, get some data logs over to Chag Tuned. So I think all we need to do right now is a cold start and an idle log. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna see how she's sitting with those AFRs. Fuel pressure's right at 44 pounds. That's all dialed in. And obviously it runs a thousand times better at 44 PSI than it would at 70 PSI. So excited for all this. I originally thought this was gonna be like a one day, maybe a two day max project, but it turned into like a four day or a five six week long project really really quick but we're here now so let's get her all right let's see how this cold start is Ooh, money freaking spot on 14.6 she's spot on guys look at that Either that or our wideband is already messed up. Everything with the car is solid. We did that first 15 minute data log. I'm gonna go drive the car right now to the gas station and data log on the way there. Fill up on some nice fresh 92 octane. Provided it's not too late, we can start data logging this thing. I really, really wish it wasn't this warm out. I don't have AC in the shop. Pretty much all day I've been just letting the Duramax run outside with the AC cranked and every like 30 minutes I'll go jump in there, chill a little bit, cool off because I am not used to this heat. Spokane is not meant to be this freaking hot. Something a little fishy is going on with our AFRs still. I don't know what's going on. New sensor just put in it, and it just keeps hovering in between 14.4 and 14.6. That's it, no matter what you do, even the car not running so i think that new sensor is already shit even though it's brand new kind of weird but the car does run absolutely perfect it runs very 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 good surprisingly a well, lot surprisingly but it runs very good for just being a base map i do have the y-band for the frs so i'm gonna go steal that brand new sensor right out of the box out of the AEM freaking box and uh, put it on this car and see what happens new sensors in let's fire it up see what's going on That seems a little bit more accurate. Not being stuck at 14.6 all the time. I think we're good now. I don't know why I keep burning through these things. That's like four or five sensors in maybe two weeks on multiple different cars. Super weird, I don't know what's going on. I do not have good luck with these AEM widebands. We just got our second revision from Chag. So we're loading on the car now, two minute log. We're probably gonna do this for a little bit, just go back and forth, and then hopefully go drive the car. All right guys, we are out cruising around, and I'm noticing that this thing is getting a little bit warm. I did try to bleed the system, She'll get a little bit warm for a little for a tiny bit and then i'll drop right back down so we are running the half rod i'm not sure if that's gonna be a problem but then again guys spokane is never ever 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 this warm so i'm not too worried about it but i just want to start tuning and then have overheating issues and, and pop a head gasket that'd be a little bit janky i'm gonna go ahead and let it cool down oh those hood struts are nice i'm gonna check the oil check the coolant Make sure all of our fluids are good to go. We're gonna go ahead and do two pulls real quick, 3K to 7,500 on the same revision. And if it doesn't start overheating, we should be good. So I'm just gonna kind of play it safe and hopefully we don't have any issues. Let's 
completely fine on those poles. It did not overheat at all. Everything looked fine. So we're gonna continue, do a little bit more logging tonight, a little bit more tuning, but we'll probably have to finish this up tomorrow. Yo guys, before I forget, Avalon King is having a massive 4th of July sale on their Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating. I'm gonna have to set the camera up for this to describe these discounts to you guys. They're fatty. Okay, here's what we got. First off, free prep and maintenance shampoo with the purchase of two or more Armor Shield 9 kits. But wait, there's more. Three kits, $84 off. Five kits, $135 off. 10 kits, $259. 20 kits, $509. 50 kits, $1,259. And 100 kits, it's a lot of kits, $2,509 off. I'm sweating because that's so much savings. I honestly don't know if I've ever seen a sale this big that they've had. I don't know if we're ever gonna see a sale this big again. You guys have seen me ceramic coat so many things. The blue weight's coated, the FRS is coated, the Evo 10's coated. I've coated like 30 cars in my life. And it's a product I definitely stand behind. First thing down in the description box below, this sale will end in like three days. So go get your ceramic coat before it sells out because once it's gone, it's gone. First thing down below, use the link. You don't need to enter any discount codes. You're good to go. Before I go ahead and log it again, I'm gonna do a boost leak test. If you guys are ever in a pinch and you think you may have a boost leak, this is all you need. I got this coupler right here. That side fits on the turbo. And then, so I think it's a three inch to two, three and a half inch to a three inch. I don't know, four inch to three inch. Either way, that fits on the precision. And then I ran to Ace Hardware and I got this cap, drilled a hole in it, put a valve stem for a wheel into the cap. Now I'm gonna slap this on the turbo, throw maybe 20 PSI into the system and see if we hear any leaks. I'm pretty sure, like I said, I'm pretty sure there's a leak, but it's impossible to tell while the car's running. So this will ensure that we don't have any leaks whatsoever. So we definitely have a leak somewhere in these hoses right here. There's a T fitting from the BOV that runs over to the hob switch that we just did. So whatever we just did clearly made it leak. I'm gonna go ahead and get that fixed up, do the test again, make sure we don't have any leaks and go rip. I would say we're on like 15 pounds right now. That felt really, really good already. I'm gonna go take a look at the logs because I wasn't really watching the boost gauge when we were ripping. I would say like 18 pounds, somewhere in that range. Looks like we peaked out at 18.2 pounds. And I think I just revved to like 7,074 RPM. So we got a long ways to go, but she's already feeling good. I was honestly really, really worried when doing this fuel system that we are gonna lose a lot of the drivability with this car because it ran so good before. I kinda remember that with the Evo 10 when we went to pump gas to the whole flex fuel setup. There was a little bit of drivability loss for sure in that car. It doesn't drive quite as good as it used to. It still drives good, but not as good as it used to with the smaller fuel system. And honestly, so far, this thing is driving really, really nice. I'm sure that has something to do with Chag's amazing ability to tune and the fact that we ran just all high-end parts, all the radium stuff, all the Dietrich stuff. We are running Dietrich's DW2200s in this car. So I thought it wasn't gonna drive very good at all because they're huge. When you're running pump gas, you're not using nearly as much injector as you would with the 85. But honestly, so far, very, very impressed. If this thing all said and done drives like it did before, I might end up changing the setup on the 10 because I want that car to drive better. Like I said, it doesn't drive bad, but it definitely could be better. Ain't gonna lie, man, it was really, really tempting to drive Big Betty home tonight and tomorrow because she's got AC. But we haven't driven the blue Evo 8 in so freaking long that I'm willing to suffer just to drive the car. She's got no AC whatsoever. Not even an AC compressor, no condenser, no nothing on it. I also wanna get a significant amount of miles on it at once while it's very, 
very warm out just to see if it's gonna actually overheat or just get a little bit warm. We do always have the option of going with a full size, uh, it's so bumpy, a full size but a slim radiator. So it hold, it definitely holds more coolant than the half rad, but if we don't need to, I feel like it's kind of pointless. All right, we're not done tuning this thing yet, but we're gonna go rip it. Jared just pulled up. We're gonna get a beer, but we're gonna go rip first and then get a beer. Uh, put all my tuning shit everywhere. I don't wanna mess up your new seats. Don't, don't rip ass on the Brahms. Don't wanna break the bolster with my fat ass. These cars are so small. I know it. Such a no AC, it's a bitch. Dude, yeah, I just noticed how hot it feels actually. I just left my truck running all day and just would go sit in there for like. I don't know about that. That's odd. Check my boost gauge. Yeah, my oh. Under. How'd you do that? I put a boost gauge there. It's, a, it's in bars though, and I didn't know until I got it done. Oh. Jesus Christ, that interfender's gonna drive me insane. Yeah, it's on 18 pounds. It probably makes like 300. Clutch wasn't slipping when I first rode in it. That was first. on pump gas though. That was on pump, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. She's gonna eat. Oh yeah. 